Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Claire Manning Craft. And we're going to be doing some more watercolouring today, and that's going to involve doing some watercolour leaves. So I'm still absolutely in love with this book by Harriet De Winton. I did my first project out of this uh, on a video last week, and it was some of the flowers. At the start of the book, it's got some really cool watercolour techniques for you to practice. Uh, so great if you haven't done much watercolouring before. Then there's a whole section on flowers. I'm not going to show you every page, so I don't want to spoil it for you if you're going to buy it. But we're going to do some of the foliage today. Uh, so this is a little bit more of an advanced project, but still do it if you haven't had much experience. Um, but I would recommend maybe going to the front of the book first and practicing some of the techniques. So it shows you step by step how to do it. Also shows you how to do a mini version of these leaves, and they are birch leaves and it involves using loads of water, layering colours, mixing colours um, and because of all the water normally things like blooms and areas where um, you would get hard edges are actually good in this project because it gives you that real, real life uh, look to your leaves. So I find this a little bit harder for me as well because I'm used to doing lots of loose watercolouring and kind of modern style whereas this is a project uh, that you really want it to look as lifelike as possible. So we'll go through it. Um, the first thing to do is always mix up your colours as far as possible before you start and then it's much much easier, it even tells you which colours to use and it also explains to you uh, how to draw a pencil kind of underlay um, sketch so you know exactly where your leaves are going and you won't end up halfway up the page or uh, not being able to fit your image in so it's really worth doing something like that you won't see it once you've finished your painting anyway so the first part of the leaves uh, Harriet explains to have plenty of water on your brush and on the um, your mixed paint do draw yourself an outline with the brush and one of the brown or greeny colours or even the orangey colours these are leaves that are kind of going, changing colour during the autumn season. And then, so draw an outline and then add in some water. And then we do like a scalloped edge. And this is where you're mixing your colours on the leaf itself. And you must work reasonably quickly. This video is sped up a little bit as well. Um, but you must work while the leaf is still wet. And then that's when you get that lovely kind of blooms effect and you can do two, three, four colours in each leaf, some of them greener than others, some more yellowy, orangey, and then we do even some browns on here as well. So I'm using that kind of pencil skeleton to decide where my leaves are going to be. I don't want to overlap any of the leaves at the moment, uh, especially while the leaves are wet, because otherwise they'll all bleed into each other. So I'm doing each leaf I can, almost eat every other one, and uh, I'm mixing up, doing some leaves in more greeny and some more browny, more yellowy, so you get that real kind of autumn feel to it. And while it's wet, if you want to add in little bits of other colours as well uh, in your palette, then go ahead. But it's a really nice way to kind of learn how to do mixing and practice uh, what colours go together on, from your palettes as well. So let me just read out while we're doing that which colours you will need. So most uh, watercolour palettes and um, tubes of watercolour, we all tend to use uh, the same kind of colour names and then it means it doesn't matter which brand that you buy. Uh, I'm talking kind of artist and craft maybe not kind of the kids craft ones they won't name them the same but if you're using kind of an artist palette or a high-end craft palette they'll all have these same names so there's sap green uh, which is a lovely kind of neutral mid green prussian blue which is a dark navy blue burnt sienna cadmium orange cadmium yellow um, and then you mix a couple of them for the stem mix and the base mix So here we go now with the first one of the overlapping. So what I did was I it was pretty much dry in between each leaves, but I did give it a quick blast with my heat tool just to make sure that there was going to be no bleeding. 
So this is really nice because we're using quite watered down colour. You do get, kind of get um, that lovely overlap and you can see the leaf behind as well. I don't think I use quite as much water as Harriet did in hers. My uh, The overall effect of my painting was slightly darker and I think I used a bit more uh, concentrated colour and less water. It's not to worry, it's just I was still happy with how it came out. Um, but I think because this is a more advanced technique, I just need a little bit more practice in not being scared to use that little bit more water uh, to get that kind of really, really soft look. And I think my scalloped edges that make it really look like the birch leaves, um, I think I was possibly a little bit heavy handed and she does recommend using a size zero brush. I, the smallest I had to hand today was a three. So again, maybe that's why it doesn't quite look as delicate as hers but it could just be down to practice so I'll do this one again um, maybe once I've worked through a few more of the projects in the book and then see how that goes see if I've progressed in my skills a little bit more there so just working round now you uh, doing the overlapping leaves and you can see I've used a real mix of colors there that's really given it kind of depth um, and true to those autumn colors it's funny that I chose the birch leaves to do because um, I have terrible hay fever and birch trees are one of the things that really, really affect me in my hay fever. So why I chose these I don't know, I just thought they looked pretty and I loved all the autumny colours. So I think this is just the last leaf then and once this one's done we'll go on to the stem. But do experiment with adding in while it's still wet you'll see that when you add in you can move it around and normally I wouldn't recommend adding more water onto your leaf because it will create those kind of blooms if it's started to dry a bit but actually we don't mind those. So now onto the stem and it's a mix of the blue and a dark brown so you want to use your small brush and then we're doing one kind of slightly curved S shape for the main branch and then we're just connecting that main branch to the other leaves with that same colour. Once this bit is done, it's just a case of going in with that same darker colour very, very lightly and very, very gently to create the veins. Again, you don't need to know all this off the top of your head. She talks you through it all in the book and that's why it's a really, really cool book to buy. Uh, I'm going to get some in for my shop, my craft shop in Birmingham as well. Uh, so do look out for that if you're shopping here soon. So I did go over the stem again just a second time with a little bit more brown and it gave just that little bit of extra depth um, and made it that little bit darker. So now let's go on to the veins and I'm literally just using the tip of my brush. If you have got a zero or one size brush it would be really good for this. So you do the main centre vine and then just some kind of parallel ones either side of that really as light as you can do. Again I think it was a combination of a slightly bigger brush and maybe being a little bit more heavy handed than Harriet is. Although she's a much more proficient watercolourist than I am, it really is a beautiful book and it, there's projects in here that are both simple to do and great for beginners and ones that you know I've done some watercolouring before, not technically trained but even I found this one a little bit of a challenge. Great to do though and great to push yourself. So just those last few leaves. I got a little bit quicker at doing the veins. And overall, like I say, I'm happy with that. Um, I would like to practice it again though and see if I can get it looking much more delicate and much lighter. Um, but it was a fun, fun project to do. So if you'd like to see more from this book, do comment below and if you enjoyed that, I'm quite happy to do some more from this book and show you some other projects. So while you're here as well, have a look at my other videos. I've got plenty of watercolouring videos and if you are more into the paper crafts 
There's loads of card making, stamping and die cutting videos to check out as well. So do take a look, like and share and leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought. I will see you next time.